I do have a couple speaker cards. We should probably go through those at this time. Uh, you can be the first speaker, Supervisor Miley. Yeah. Well, That's a lot of cards. Well, card card. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. I wanted to make it to the, this MAC meeting. Typically, if I come to a MAC meeting, I either sit and listen or I'm coming because I have something to say. And I have something to say this evening because um, my office has been working with First Presbyterian Church on this for probably a year or more. We're, we're, uh, you know, I'm pushing this because there is a homeless problem, not only in the county but throughout the Bay Area. We have a number of unsheltered individuals and families um, out there. And there are a number of them uh, are hidden when it comes to the unincorporated area. We don't see them as much. You know, we see them more in other other um, parts of the county. So, in an effort to try to address this, ever since uh, the voters approved Measure A1, the bond measure for more funding for housing, we've been looking at all sorts of strategies to try to work on providing more housing for people, and also to try to make sure people are not getting displaced out of existing housing and creating even more of an um, unsheltered problem. This, this issue isn't something that the county can address on its own. You know, we're working with the business community, the, the private sector, um, the faith-based community, community-based organizations, other jurisdictions as well, because we can't build enough housing to accommodate the needs that present that were presently before us and the needs that are anticipated but we're doing we're doing everything we can and I think some of you are, are aware of that faith uh, the faith-based community that's stepping forward through first Presbyterian we're, we're wanting to pilot this and if this works we want to take this model and use it with other churches, not just in uh, Castor Valley, in unincorporated area, but throughout the county. The, the Alameda County Interfaith Alliance uh, is trying to pursue a similar strategy in Oakland as well. And I've been trying to push uh, the county to work with First Presbyterian, because First Presbyterian is eager to make this happen. And we control the land use, and we control the decision-making process in the corporate area, so we want to model something for the rest of the county. There are other places like San Jose and other uh, locales that are looking at tiny homes. And tiny homes have been uh, approved in other parts of the country as well. So we're trying to set a model here, a pilot. It's, I'm very eager to try to get this expedited. The staff's been working on this. The, the planning staff, fire, building, we've been working with other jurisdictions. We wanted to bring it to the MAC this evening so the MAC could begin to understand what we're attempting to do and also give the public an opportunity to understand it and, and begin to weigh in. The, the issues associated with this, we would have um, our health care for the homeless, that work with the homeless uh, population, helping to provide the services for, uh, for the individuals and families that would be at these um, six uh, facilities. In Oakland, Oakland approved sheds for some of the folks who were out on the streets. Now, sheds are not tiny homes. Sheds are sheds. Sheds are, you know, they don't have running water. They don't have kitchens. They don't have, it's just a shed. You can put your tools in there, whatever. A shed may be better than sleeping in a tent and sleeping out in the cold, but it's still just a shed. What we're trying to do here is a tiny home, and it can be mobile or it can be stationary. In this case, we're looking for it to be mobile, but we, aren't, we don't want to have another mobile home park either. So, we're, so this is kind of we're doing something totally different, and we're only looking at doing this because the need is so great. Tiny homes... You know, they can be modular. You might have heard this already. They can be modular. They can be containers that have been converted to uh, tiny homes. They can be built from scratch. We've got community colleges that are building them. We've got individuals that are building them, uh, et cetera. So there are a lot of um, 
and, and I could have brought some pictures with me this evening just to show you, but there are a lot of different prototypes for tiny homes. So this partnership with the, with the, with the government and the faith-based community to try to provide housing for unsheltered individuals is extremely important. And it's temporary housing, so it's to kind of get people off the streets into shelter and then try to move them on to uh, ho hopefully permanent housing uh, and, and, and then on to um, a productive, uh, gainful, contributing members of society so they're no longer uh, unsheltered. So I just wanted to speak to this because this is, a main, this is a major priority in my office. Obviously, it's a major priority for the county be, with uh, the A1 um, bond measure passing for housing. And the tiny homes, it's not the panacea, but it's just another piece of this effort at trying to address the issue of, uh, of, of unsheltered individuals and try to address the housing need. I, you know, I, I know the Mac's aware of, you know, with the state approving or allowing for ADUs, especially dwelling units. I mean, there's a lot of effort to trying to come up with more housing. And so the thing is, we, we need to have the housing, but we need to also stop the displacement, and we need to deal with the people who are out on the streets. The tiny homes helps us to deal with the folks who are out on the streets. And that's, and that's part, you know, it's just part of a, an entire um, holistic strategy that needs to be addressed to try to get a handle on this issue of both unsheltered individuals and the need for more affordable housing and the need for more housing throughout this whole, you know, this, the, the county, the region, and the state. So I hope, I know the, the MAC, you know, this evening you may, may be wearing your hats as uh, land use, but just keep in mind that the MAC, you know, your, your responsibilities are land use, public safety, public health, public welfare. I mean, you're looking at the whole pa panoply of what's good for, you know, good for um, the quality of, um, of the people who um, are here in the, uh, the Castor Valley general plan area. And I think this is, a, this is an experiment and we don't have any problem with it being monitored, but it's, it's, it's extremely important. And it's not often we have a willing partner in a faith community that wants to do this. And so we're trying to, you know, like I said, I'm trying to push the county staff to move this along. And as I said, we started working on this, I would say, at least a year ago. But in the meantime, while we've been working on this, there are people that are still suffering as a result of not having the ability to have, you know, uh, shelter. So... And we're not looking for uh, Castor Valley to solve the, the problems of the, the county or the world. But if we can put this in place, learn from it, and it works, then maybe we can get other churches, not just in Castor Valley, but throughout the Bay Area. Because we do have other churches, like I said, uh, the Alameda County Interfaith Alliance. They're interested in this. We've got other churches that are interested in this as well. But at the, at the moment, nobody's been successful in, in making it happen. So we have the chance of making it happen uh, here in unincorporated Alameda County in Castro Valley. And so I just really wanted to impress that upon all of you in terms of, uh, you know, this has got my, my support. And I really hope the MAC, I mean, I appreciate all the questions because we need to answer those questions and satisfy your, your concerns and your curiosity. But we really need to try to uh, do everything we can to move this along. And when PG&E... Uh, not PG&E, East Bay Mud, um, the Sanitary District, all of them have come forward with their, with their fees and requirements. You know, we've been trying to push them to, to look at this from a humanitarian point of view um, and, 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 and take it on as a pilot in that sense and see how we can shape this in a way that uh, uh, demonstrates it's a, it's a pilot. We're, we're doing something different out of the box. We don't have, you know, the, we don't, we're building this as we as we move along, as we fly. This isn't anything that we've done in the past, and so I think that's probably all I, I want to say at the moment. But uh, I just really wanted to impress that upon all of you, <coughs> uh, Linda, Chuck, uh, Sheila, Mark, Ken, Dave, and um, Ted. Thank you. New guy in the block. New guy, yeah. <clears throat>